Hello, my dear students. I hope everyone is doing fine. Let us start a new lesson today, Unit 3, Economies and Livelihood. Today we shall discuss industrialization, 1850s to 1950s, industrial revolution and industrialization in Britain, inventions of weaving and spinning machines, and the new method of industrial management. First, let's see industrialization. The Industrial Revolution that began in Britain in the middle of the 18th century was not a planned historical event. The transformation of an agrarian British society into an industrial society obviously was not an event that came about in a natural way. Many circumstances led to the industrialization in Britain or any other country of the world. It was from the industri industrial Britain that the designs of industrialization spread to other countries of Europe and the United States of America. The wave came to Asia and Africa much later. In class 9, we already discussed agricultural revolution in Britain and America. It resulted into the creation of a large number of displaced farm workers, particularly in Britain. They began to run from place to place in search of work. Some of such people hired themselves out to rich farmers while some of them switched over to spinning and weaving. They began to work wherever they could get better job wages. With the dawn of the 19th century, steam power and machinery completely revolutionized, revolutionized the manufacture and transport systems of Britain. A large number of workers thrown into the factories for their livelihood. Now let's see industrial revolution and industrialization in Britain. By the middle of the 18th century, Britain had established a big empire across the globe, supported by a powerful navy and merchant ships. The British traders were eager to earn handsome profit through export trade. Indeed, they could do so particularly by the woolen traders. Side by side, cotton goods also began to get good markets in the British colonies. Their only hard deal was to compete with the cotton textiles produced in India. The British textile merchants were graced by the inventions of various spinning and weaving machines and steam engine, which ultimately mechanized the British textile industry on a large scale. Now let's see the meaning of industrialization. Industrialization means the adoption of industrial methods of production and manufacturing by a country or group of countries with all the associated changes in lifestyle, transport, and social aspects. This is the definition of industrialization. Now let's see inventions of weaving and spinning machines and their inventors. <clears throat> One of the foremost inventions which made weaving quicker was the flying shuttle of John Kay, 1704 to 1764. It was patented in 1733. As the flying shuttle sped up weaving, the demand for cotton yen became alarmingly increased. Many British inventors worked hard to improve the spinning wheel. James Hargreaves, 1720-1779, a weaver and carpenter himself, patented his spinning zeni in 1779. His machine was named after his daughter, the spinning zeni. It enabled one worker to run eight spindles instead of one. In the meantime, Richard Arkwright, 1732-1792, developed his water frame, a machine for spinning with roller functions by water. In 1779, Samuel Crompton, a spinner, combined her grips, spinning zenny and Arkwright's water frame into a spinning machine. It came to be known as the mule. It produced thread or yarn of greater fineness and strength than the thread spin by the spinning zenny or the water frame. In 1785, Edmund Cartwright patented his power loom. However, many weavers strongly opposed to its use as it threw many of them out of employment. In 1785, Thomas Bell invented the cylinder printing of cotton goods. It helped a lot on the improvement of block printing on cotton cloth. In 1793, the available supply of cotton yarn was increased by Eli Whitney's cotton zinc. 
The process of industrialization in England was not confined to textile industry alone. In 1763, a Scottish mechanic called James Watt perfected the new common steam engine and made it a practical device for use in operating machines. Darby Abraham founded the Bristol, uh, Bristol Iron Company in 1708 and he is generally acknowledged as the first man to use coke successfully in the smelting of iron ore. His grandson Abraham 1750-91 made the first cast iron bridge of 100 feet span over the river Savan in 1779. In 1775, Henry Court bought an iron works near Playmouth and invented the puddling process for converting pig iron into wrought iron as well as a system of groove rollers for the production of iron bars. Henry Bessemer, an English iron maker, invented his vertical converter for making steel from iron. He patented a tilting converter in 1860 and in the next year, William and Frederick Siemens introduced open heart furnace. As a result of such developments, the iron and steel industry in England became more and more productive. Now, let us see the new method of industrial management. <clears throat> Changes in the industrialization in England and the West were great by the beginning of the 20th century. New scientific knowledge was used to the industry as scientists and engineers unlocked the secrets of chemistry and physics to a great extent. New industries in a big way came up on the scientific advancement. Steel, chemical and petrol products were benefited from the new findings of chemistry. Breakthroughs in the field of electricity and magnetism provided the basis for a large electrical industry in Britain and elsewhere. These new industries were larger and more productive than any other industries which were existing before. No doubt, the United States and Germany began to challenge Britain in the war market for industrial goods. The steel and chemical industries applied new technology that greatly increased production. The size of factories increased rapidly, employing more workers and using more advanced machinery. Advancement in communications and transportations benefited decision makers to maintain control. New methods of industrial management were devised that stress central control, planning and efficient methods of industrial production on the eve of the First World War. Many industries began to use interchangeable parts and machinery. Electricity replaced the steam power in factories. Consequently, Industrial production marked great progress in the mass production methods. With this, let us conclude our lesson for today. <clears throat>